From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight for the MTN 9 o'clock news. I'm Russ Riesinger. President Trump summoned top Michigan Republican lawmakers to the White House today as he continues his bid to overturn the 2020 election. His administration is still not communicating with President-elect Joe Biden, who met in person with top congressional Democrats on this, his 78th birthday. CBS's Michael George is in Wilmington, Delaware with the latest. Will you honor the will of the Michigan voters? Top Michigan State Senate Republican Mike Shirky was met with protests as he arrived in Washington for a meeting at the White House Friday. The invitation to Michigan lawmakers appears to be President Trump's latest effort to overturn results in a state he lost by more than 150,000 votes. It's an abuse of office. It's an open attempt to intimidate election officials. Uh, it's absolutely appalling. Georgia certified its results Friday with a win for Biden. A recount is currently underway in Wisconsin, and the Trump campaign is still pursuing lawsuits. The president's been very clear. He wants every legal vote to be counted uh, and to make sure no illegal votes are counted. Here in Wilmington, President-elect Biden is pressing ahead with a transition, despite a lack of cooperation from the White House. Welcome to Wilmington. The president-elect and vice president-elect met with top congressional Democrats. We we're discussing the lame duck session, the urgency the urgency of crushing the virus and easing the pain of this economic crisis. The Trump administration is pushing back on concerns that a delayed transition with regard to the coronavirus vaccine distribution will cost American lives. The same career people that are running this response in Operation Warp Speed on January 19th are going to be the same people on January 21st, and every aspect of what we do is completely transparent. Mr. Biden is set to be inaugurated as the 46th president in exactly two months. Michael George, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. Well, the Michigan legislators released a statement after their meeting with President Trump saying they have not been made aware of any information that would change the outcome of the election in Michigan. And they said they will follow the law and the normal process regarding Michigan's electors. A Trump campaign official tells CBS News that the president has expressed interest in inviting Pennsylvania state legislators to the White House for an in-person meeting as well. A Bozeman lawmaker appointed to a Montana governor-elect Greg Gianforte transition team is now under fire after a controversial social media post. MTN's Gabby Krevet has the full story. A Bozeman lawmaker says he's sorry for calling Vice President-elect Kamala Harris a slur with sexual connotations in a social media post. Carrie White has represented Southern Gallatin County for the last four terms in the Montana legislature and told MTN News in a phone call on Friday morning that he made a mistake. The Republican lawmaker made the inappropriate post on social media on November 17th. The social media post was starting to get traction after a left-wing blog called the Montana Post flagged it on Twitter. The post has since been deleted, but White told MTN News he was apologetic, saying, quote, I made a mistake. In times of turmoil, I allowed anger to get in the way of good judgment. I apologize for what happened, and it won't happen again. The Montana Post says White also posted a meme promoting misinformation and violence to liberals. White says he did not make that post and claims it was photoshopped. White was recently appointed as an advisor to Governor-elect Gianforte's Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks Advisory Board. MTN News reached out to the transition office for a comment and did not hear back in time for broadcast. In Bozeman, Gabby Krevet, MTN News. Having served four terms, Kerry White has termed out of the Montana legislature as of this year. Governor-elect Gianforte is busy setting up several transition teams as he prepares to take the reins of the state in January. The governor-elect has gathered a cross-section of Montana business and community leaders to help him get off to a running start. I think this governor's orientation is to try to pull people together and have discussions. I don't think he would be someone who would sort of hide on the second floor. I think he would be very engaged and that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting him to pull together whoever's there, Republicans, Democrats on a particular issue and try to say, you know, this, this is one I'd like to be involved in. Let's see if we can work it out. I, I'm, I'm expecting more of a CEO type approach to communication and that's gonna lead to strategy and, and a lot of things that, at least from my vantage point, we haven't seen, but you know, every governor approaches this differently and we'll see. 
Well, this week, Gianforte set up nine transition teams to help identify top candidates for department heads and related state boards. And the Billings area is well represented. Yellowstone County Commissioner Don Jones is on the Department of Revenue team. Business executive Karen Fagg will help select the new head of the Department of Administration. Montana Peterbilt President Kevin Gustanus is on the transportation team. And Clock Tower Inn owner Steve Warlick is among 10 people helping with the transition at the Departments of Labor and Commerce. Those are just a few of the local people involved. The teams will send their recommendations on to Gianforte. And by the way, team members are all volunteer and are not paid. Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twido is among 12 people named by Attorney General-elect Austin Knutson to be part of his transition team at the State Justice Department. Now, federal prosecutors filed murder charges today against the man suspected of killing the daughter of the vice chairman of the Crow Tribe. 27-year-old Taylor Plainbull is now indicted on first-degree murder and other charges. Court documents state Plainbull shot and killed 26-year-old Lanita Goes Ahead, the daughter of Carlton Goes Ahead, on Blue Creek Road, October 24th. Plainbull was allegedly driving a stolen truck when he saw Goes Ahead, his ex-girlfriend going the other way with a man and a child. Plainbull then forced Goes Ahead's vehicle into a ditch and shot her. He was arrested three days later after a standoff with police at the Roadway Inn in Billings. Plainbull faces mandatory life in prison for the first-degree murder charge. Montana counties report 1,475 new COVID-19-related deaths today as the state surpasses more than 19,000 active cases. MTN News reports the state death toll now stands at 603. Three of those deaths are right here in Yellowstone County. Two women in their 60s and one in her 80s died this week. Also today, Broadwater County reported its first death. And a reminder, Governor Steve Bullock and Yellowstone County's new COVID-19 restrictions are now in effect as of today. The governor has expanded the mask mandate to include all counties statewide, regardless of the number of active cases. He also opened bars, restaurants, breweries, distilleries, and casinos to be limited to 50% capacity, and they must close by 10 p.m. Eating and drinking establishments must also limit group sizes to six or fewer, with a mandatory six-foot physical distance between groups. Bullock also ordered all public gatherings limited to 25 or fewer people and asked that private gatherings be limited to 15 or fewer. And here in Yellowstone County, those restrictions go a bit further. The 25-person limit on gatherings includes all indoor and outdoor gatherings, even if you can social distance. And in Yellowstone County, all places where people gather, including churches and retail businesses, must move to 50% capacity and must close by 10 p.m. Bars can only take orders from and serve customers who are physically seated. And another major change from the governor's order here in Yellowstone County, adult and youth organized athletic teams or music groups, they can practice, but they cannot hold games or performances. Both the state and Yellowstone County restrictions exclude music or sports affiliated with schools. Well, the coronavirus pandemic is more widespread than ever before with hospitalizations on the rise in nearly all 50 states. More than 1 million virus cases were reported across the country in the last seven days. A curfew has now been ordered in most California counties. Donya Backus has the latest, including some positive news on the vaccine front. With cases of the coronavirus surging throughout the country, a vaccine may be on the way. Drug maker Pfizer is requesting emergency use authorization from the FDA for its vaccine, which may be more than 90% effective. Should this be approved, uh, we would then expect that our first shipment of roughly 130,000 doses would arrive in state around Christmas time. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy welcomed the news as parts of his state impose strict measures to contain the spread. All residents in the city of Newark are being asked to stay at home for 10 days beginning next Wednesday. And starting tonight, a curfew is in effect in some areas. We need that because we have too much cases over here. Frontline workers say they are not only battling the virus, but denial from people who think COVID is fake news. I have never seen so much death and so much sickness in the past two weeks than I have in my entire 10 years in healthcare. California's governor is imposing an overnight stay at home order for most counties that keeps people from leaving their homes from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. in an effort to slow the spread. The order goes into effect Saturday and will impact businesses in hot zones like Los Angeles County. 
All it's going to do is cause more people to go on unemployment because I'm going to furlough another five people beginning next week. The CDC is also urging Americans not to travel over the Thanksgiving holiday, strongly suggesting people celebrate with people they live with. I get it, but it's Thanksgiving and people want to be with their families. A week before the holiday, people lined up for boxes of food in Colorado. Feeding America, the nation's largest hunger relief organization, says the coronavirus-related economic crisis could leave 54 million Americans unable to access affordable food. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. The U.S. reported more than 187,000 new cases of the virus yesterday, the highest one-day total since the pandemic began. Still to come on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2. We just told you the CDC advising people not to travel for Thanksgiving, but what you need to know if you are still planning a trip. And Krista Rose is in for Bob next with a look at your full forecast.